Hello, so I wanted to put together this relatively short video that discusses hotspot analysis on ArcGIS Pro. So I've got ArcGIS Pro open. I'm just going to open up a blank map, going to start a new project. I'll give it some descriptive name. And this one is going to be studying fires across California. So we'll say fire events. How about that? And then we'll click OK. So that's going to be the name of my new project. Now the blank map is going to open and I've got data from fire scars um, and from fire boundaries dating back from the 1980s all the way to the present for California. So I'm going to go to that data and just insert it into my map. So let's just go add data map. And this particular project is right here. This is California Fire Perimeters All, and it's a shape file. I was able to download this from the California gov or government website. So let me just click on that. And now what you're gonna see are boundaries of fire events that have occurred across California. And if we open up the attribute table for this particular shape file set, we can see how far back it goes. So We've got a lot of fires here. We've got alarm dates. Um, this says the 19, 2020. So let's take a look and do sort ascending to see where we start with. We've got some null events. So we don't know when those particular dates are. But when I go down, actually, we've got quite a few null events. <laughs> but for this particular project, we're not particularly concerned about when uh, they occurred. Although we do have some data here dating back from the 1930s. Well, this goes way back. And then if we go all the way to the bottom, we have data extending to 2022. And you can see here that we've got over 20,000 fire events across California. So what I want to do is some hotspot analysis. I want to see whether or not there is statistically significant clustering of fires that have occurred across California. Because if we can find these hotspots, then we have a better idea of whether or not fires are going to occur there regularly. We've got a huge data set as well. If I was really looking at this, I'm looking at this to do a real project. I might consider getting rid of some of the very old fires and concentrating on the relatively new ones that have occurred in the past few decades uh, just to consider changes in weather, climate, landscape, things of that nature. But for this example, we're just going to include everything. So in order to do a hotspot analysis, all you need to do is click on the analysis tab and then tools. And then in the find tools, you just type in hotspot. And when you do hotspot, you're actually gonna have a couple of choices. The first one is hotspot analysis, and the second is optimized hotspot analysis. When you do the optimized hotspot analysis, it's actually going to do some things for you. It's going to do some weighting for you so that you don't have to. Uh, just as an example, if I click on hotspot analysis, the first one, then you're going to see what choices I have to do my analysis. And so we'll let this load up. It'll just take a second. And here it is. And you'll notice here we've got input feature class, input field, output feature class. And then you've got a few different things here that you can do in your hotspot analysis. One is your distance method and the choices you have is Euclidean or Manhattan. Then you also have your conceptualization of spatial relationships. By default, it's on fixed distance band, but you've got a whole bunch of different choices. And so if you really knew, know what you're doing, then you might want to choose this one instead. If you just want the system to optimize it on your behalf, then you select optimize. And when you select on optimize, you'll notice that you don't have any of those other settings. The system will do it for you and optimize things for you. So in this case, we'll just do the optimized hotspot analysis. My input feature is going to be California Fire, which is just my layer here. We've got a new name. Um, we'll just keep that as default. The analysis field, we'll just use object ID because we're just looking for individual um, fire polygons. And again, when you do these hotspots, it can be point analysis or polygon analysis. So clearly we're doing polygon. That's it, that's all we have to do. And now I'm gonna click run. And when I click on run, the hotspot analysis is going to occur. The system is going to do what it needs to do. 
And then when it's done, the map is going to give me the hotspot analysis. So this will just take a, a second. This is a rather large data set. So it's going to go relatively quickly, considering that it's such a large data set of over 20,000 polygons. In this case, we're running Moran's eye at varying distances, and that's what the optimized solution is for this particular project. And here it is. Here's our results. You'll notice the system now has a legend and we have a new map. And in fact, let me get rid of this particular map, which shows all of my perimeters, and we'll just concentrate on the hot spots. Now you'll notice that the color up here, this blue color, is going to be a cold spot with 99% confidence, and the red is a hot spot with 99% confidence. And again, what that red is indicative of is a high probability that there is clustering of these fires. So if we take a look at particular places, we'll go down here to the map and we'll zoom in a bit. We can see that in places such as San Diego County, which does have large fires, you can see that they're not necessarily clustered events. And now if we take a look at other places, we go up along the coast of California, we take a look at the Thousand Oaks area, we see that there's a high probability that we've got a hot spot or statistically significant clustering of fire events. And we see that as well as we continue up the coastline of California. When we get up to San Francisco, the Bay Area, we see some clustering as well. But again, all along these different areas, we don't see statistical significance in terms of clustering. So that's your, that's your hot spot analysis. You can certainly explore the non-optimized and fiddle around with the different settings. It's really a good exercise, especially if you're exploring different spatial analytical techniques. Um, really is a nice tool in ArcGIS Pro. Okay, that's it. Um, thanks a lot for listening. And until next time, bye-bye.